This video was sponsored by Sweetwater Sound. Find a link to my artist page in the description where you can browse my personal top gear picks. As well, if you're in the market for new equipment, Sweetwater's 48 month financing on most items will help you get the gear that you need. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna make this kick drum sound as big as possible. Hopefully you can take some tips and tricks from this video and maybe apply it to your kit at home. Let's get to it. First thing we're gonna need to do is put a hole in the head. This is a special hole. That's called the kick port. It's a product that you can buy for like $50. At least that's how much I paid here in Canada. The idea is when the pressure of the air inside the drum is being forced into the resonance head, there's a funnel that's gonna funnel the air more efficiently into your microphone, which just adds a little bit more to the tone overall. Now, as you can see, I already have the kick port installed, so I'm not gonna redo it again for this video because to be truthful, it's an absolute to get this guy in your resonance head. Good luck at home if you're gonna install your own. You can see on the screen though, a time lapse of the first time when Lindsay and I installed this one. The nice part about a product like this too is despite it being 50 bucks, we installed this one a year ago and there's still no reason to take it out. Unlike a lot of the equipment that you're gonna purchase for a drum set, there's no actual real wear and tear or reason to replace the kick port that you buy. You're pretty much gonna have it forever. So for me to get a little bit more out of my kick drum and because I don't have to replace it down the line, the $50 was totally worth it. All right, so now that you got a big gaping hole in the front of your kick drum, the next thing we're gonna talk about is putting a shoe inside of your bass drum. Specifically, your friend Kelly's. <laughs> is that funny? The Kelly shoe mount. It got its name because the original design looked like a horseshoe. We, however, today are using the Kelly shoe flats, which is a version of the product that best suits the Shure Beta 91A, which is a boundary condenser microphone, and it's gonna act as our kick in. The idea with this microphone is once it's attached to the Kelly shoe and mounted inside the drum, it's gonna sit about six inches away from the batter head, and it's gonna deliver sonically a lot of the high end or click that we're gonna want out of this kick drum. A simple and cheaper substitute for this microphone could be an SM56 just placed on the batter head of your kick drum. Mounting this microphone to the accessory is very simple. We're gonna put it at one end and slide to the other. The next thing we do now to actually attach this to the bass drum is we're gonna remove some of the lug screws on the inside of the bass drum and then simply reinsert the screws, but this time through the straps of the actual mount. when I actually attached these leather straps to the lug screws, I didn't screw the lug screw all the way tight. I'm gonna do that now that the straps are in place. Otherwise, these wouldn't have been able to bend and move with the tension from the elastic bands, and it just would have made it much more difficult to actually mount it. So now we're gonna go back through and just tighten these guys. If you were inspired by any of the techniques that I'm using in this video or you want to check out any of the products that I'm using to bring my kick drum to life, I have listings to all those products down in the description. The next thing I'm going to do is apply the resonance head that we saw from earlier with the kick port attached to it, and I'm going to actually tune the head. The kick drum you're watching me set up is a DW Performance Series maple kick drum, and the size of it is an 18 by 22. I think that's cool to mention just because it's a very, very standard size, so a lot of you guys at home are probably going to share that in common with my kick drum, which is going to make these techniques extremely applicable to you. So now what I'm I'm doing is I'm just going around loosely finger tightening each one kind of together in these pairs like you see. Uh, the idea with when you're tuning any drum is you want to bring the tension up on the lugs on the head itself as evenly as possible. This just allows for as true a tone as you can possibly get when you start to apply pressure. So with the resonance head, I wanna get the head to a point where when I press down in the center of the drum, there's no wrinkles on any of the lugs. We're almost there right now, just finger tightening each lug. What I'm gonna do from here to add some more tension is go to each lug, put a little bit of pressure, and then tighten it with the other hand a little bit further, as you saw me just do. I'll do it right here so maybe you can get a better shot of that. So a little bit more pressure, and then tighten like that. Maybe a half to almost a full turn on each lug. And we'll just go around, apply a little bit more pressure, and get those turns in. So by now, we can press down, and pretty much I don't see any, I see a little bit of wrinkling, just a touch. So now what I'm gonna do is take my drum key and just do one quarter turn on each lug in a star pattern as if we were tuning a snare drum. For this video, I'm introducing a new microphone. Today we're gonna be unboxing the DW Moon Mic. Let's check that guy out. Look how shiny that is. Oh my god. 
The DW Moon Mic. There she is. Oh, that's just a, um, a cloth to dust this that is now covered in fingerprints. Wow, that is actually so cool. Look at that. Isn't that sick? Yeah, it looks like a mini snare stand. What's cool about that is, is like, if I'm not using the microphone, you can use the stand for other hardware, I guess. What would you, what would you want to use this for? Uh, a microphone that you have really low. No, it's not going to work for mics. It's just going to work for drum hardware, which is really cool because this is the only microphone that I've ever purchased that comes with a piece of drum hardware. I guess it's by DW. That makes sense. <laughs> there it is. That's the craziest microphone I've ever owned. Look at this thing. This is crazy. <laughs> oh man, I'm really excited to hear how this sounds. With the residence head set up, we're gonna cable the Beta 91A. Inside of my kick drum, there are Velcro strips. Those align to these DW pillows. You just take the pillow and you can squish it down onto the actual Velcro and it's gonna press that pillow against the head, which is going to uh, apply the dampening you're gonna want and also bring out some more of the low end in the drum. Now I'm only actually using one of the two DW pillows. When setting up this drum and going back and forth with Chris Cazell, he suggested using more. So we've got a full size bed pillow here that I'm gonna slip underneath the Cali shoe like that, and you can see too that it fits nicely underneath that kick port at the back of the drum. And then in front of that, I'm gonna apply the Velcro strip for this pillow, and that's gonna be the dampening we need. The next step is gonna be applying the batter head. For batter heads, I personally go with the Attack Bomb Beat. I do endorse Attack drum heads, and of all of their kick heads, this is the one that really works the best for the tone that I'm looking for with my kick drum. Just as I did with the resonance head, I'm gonna apply pressure to each lug and just finger tighten a little bit further with the distance, the gap that's created once I apply that pressure. And from there, on this head, instead of going one quarter turn on all the lugs, I'm gonna do one half turn all the way around. I might even go a little bit further because this is a brand new head and it is gonna stretch out as I play it. Now with the head's applied, the last thing we're gonna do is I'm just gonna line up this Evans EQ patch. That's not bad. Inside, we have the Beta 91A. We mentioned that earlier in the video. On the outside, the DW Moon Mic, and then alongside of it as my microphone for the kick port, this is the Beta 52A by Shure. I'm gonna position the Moon Mic here, of course, because we need a chunk of head that isn't affected by the kick port. We'll plug our XLR in. And now the Beta 52A is gonna be our mic for the kick port, we're gonna put it right like that. Now sonically, the idea is that the kick in our Beta 91 is gonna be all of the high end, that snap that really brings, like articulates the drum. This guy here is gonna be more of the mid tones. And then this, of course, is gonna act as our sub kick.
forgot to mention that Chris Gazelle pretty much handles the majority of the audio you hear on the channel, including the mixes that you just listen to in those demonstrations. He also has on his YouTube channel a bunch of breakdowns on how to mix a kick drum as well as how to mix a full drum set. So if you are using a similar setup to me and you're curious as to how to get the actual stems to sound like what you just heard, you can check out his instructional videos over on his channel. I will include links to those videos in the description of this video. I really hope that you guys at home enjoyed watching me set up the kick drum and then test it and show off some of the microphones that I'm using to bring my kick to life. If you did, make sure to let me know. Comment down below what you learned from this video or some tips and tricks that you can take into your own setup to make your kick drum sound a little bit bigger, sound a little bit better for your own mixes. Here's thank you to my Patreon family for making all of my videos possible. Big thanks to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video and I will see you guys all very soon with something new.